Hello, David from David Savory Electrical here, and you may recall this Nikita Bluetooth conversion I did about, so it was about three weeks ago I actually did it. Uh, we've used it out on site quite a few times since, and it's been pretty successful, I have to say. However, there is one nagging noise element to it. If I turn it on, move the microphone closer, you can perhaps hear a, an intermittent whining noise emitting from it. It seems to have stopped now. Typical, isn't it? seems to come and go. Uh, you only really hear it when the thing's quiet. Uh, so normally when we're blasting some tunage or podcasts or whatever from it, it's, uh, it's not really been a problem. But uh, some clever people have been in touch to tell me what the fault is and how I can get around it. So I'm going to make a modification to my modification today to hopefully improve this thing even further. You may recall that to conceal and power my Bluetooth receiver within the Makita's casing, I went hunting for a 5 volt supply only present when the thing was powered on, and not just when the uh, battery was attached, as it would otherwise drain the bugger while it sat out on the van. The Bluetooth receiver runs off 5 volts, but the battery in this beast is a walloping 18 volts, so I needed to tap into something inside that offered a flat, stable DC source when switched on. Several people asked why I didn't tie into a 5 volt line off the micro USB port on the rear. Well, I can confirm there is no 5 volt source there. This port is for firmware upgrades, not to connect your MP3 player or to charge your mobile phone from. I haven't looked into it, but I assume that if you wanted to upgrade the firmware, you'd connect a laptop via a USB A to micro USB lead, and the laptop would provide the host voltage. It was also suggested that perhaps other elements such as the display backlight or the radio tuner may be running from 5 volts, and you know, perhaps so. But having spent some time probing around, I went instead for an 18 volt supply point, which was stable and, just as importantly, had solder points big enough for my cack handed soldering efforts. Those points being on an electrolytic capacitor, which is also a component I could easily source and replace should I cock things up with my ham fisted efforts. Requiring a conversion from 18 volt to 5 volt, I opted for a 7805 voltage regulator, which happened to be to hand and whose operation is simple enough for even the likes of me to understand. And you know, it's been working just fine out on site for three weeks. As I said at the start, there's a bit of intermittent hum and times, but uh, I would have lived with it if several viewers cleverer than I hadn't responded in the comments to kindly inform me that the bothersome buzzing was down to a ground loop effect. Basically, the ground supply of my Bluetooth receiver being the same as that of my audio output, and something I hope to fix today in an improvement to this mod. Firstly, it was suggested that the 7805 regulator perhaps isn't the best beast for the job of stepping down the voltage. Some comments came in championing the use of a DC to DC converter instead. My particular thanks to these proper electronics people, and especially to DefPom, whose worthy channel is linked to in the description. For instead of mocking my technical ineptitude, they pointed me towards the switch mode book converter. What the buck am I blabbing on about, you may well ask? Well, here's one I nabbed this week from Amazon, and there's a link in the description for those interested. This is a DC to DC step down converter, and the nice thing about this is that the output voltage is adjustable. I've set one up here on my bench power supply, and I've dialed that up to provide about 18 volts to match what my Makita battery would supply. On the output, I have my TIS E217 multimeter with its patented sexy time backlit display. So let's switch that on. 18 volts in, 17 volts out, and by adjusting this potentiometer, I can set the output voltage. to a value of my choosing. In this case, I'd want a nice flat five volts. Lovely stuff. I'll do it. How it works is quite interesting. It's rapidly switching on and off. And when it switches on, the rising current causes a voltage to form across this inductor, which opposes the source voltage, reducing the voltage at the output. As the current stabilises, the voltage across the inductor drops, causing it to rise at the load, but energy is now stored in the inductor's magnetic field. It then switches off before the current flattens out, causing the current flow to decrease and the input voltage to drop. The collapsing magnetic field of the inductor then uh, induces a current which now discharges through the load. All this happens so rapidly that the load is either being driven from the voltage source or from the inductor. 
but the average output voltage is always below that of the source thanks to the inductor opposing the source voltage when on and providing the load voltage when off. That's highly simplified, so uh, haters don't hate. Uh, you'll find some electronics boffins who can tell you more on this very platform. Cutting back to the chase, am I better off using this instead of using my 7805 to provide the power? Well, maybe, but in this case, any advantage is pretty minimal and would only relate to a tiny power saving, if even that. The problem with this particular unit is it won't eliminate my background buzzing as the source and load grounding are still common. I can demonstrate that. I'll disconnect it from the supply and connect my TIS between input and output grounds and switch to continuity mode. Then my meter tells me we have a direct connection between the two. What I need then is a DC to DC converter with an isolated output so that the input and output grounds are not electrically commoned. Sadly, my usual suppliers failed to yield such, and although there were offerings on eBay, I tend to avoid that den of stolen goods and counterfeit cack. Sure, the risk is only a handful of pound coins perhaps, but uh, who knows what will actually turn up when and if it really is what it claims to be. So I'm sticking with the 7805 for its simplicity and because it's already installed there. How then can I get rid of any unwanted whistling through my speakers? Well, other commenters who pointed out that this was a ground loop problem came to the rescue. This kind of issue is nothing new, and although hi-fi separates were just before my time, it was a problem back when such things were popular, and was caused by each separate piece of audio equipment having its own supply separate from the amplifier, at least as I understand it. So inline isolators were produced to correct the problem, and they're still available today. Once again, Amazon to the rescue with this thing. Apparently, I have to simply insert this on the audio output of my Bluetooth dongle, and apparently all will be right with the world. Could it be that easy? Let's give it a go. Okay, so hopefully we can do this without too many tools or soldering efforts. I'm gonna just unplug my audio output from my Bluetooth receiver. It's a good job I didn't hardwire that in, isn't it? I was toying with the idea of hardwiring that in at one stage before I fitted the, the jack. I'm gonna plug that into my ground loop isolator and I'm gonna plug the other end of my isolator into the output of the Bluetooth receiver. There we go. Right. Oh. Let's see if that does the trick, shall we? Put the battery in. Fire up. We should go to auxin 2. That noise is the Bluetooth receiver waking up and uh, Maximum volume, I'm just going to move the microphone. Not a peep coming out of the speakers. Mm. Let's connect it. Right, I'm just getting my telephony instrument of choice for zapping tunage to it. I don't know why I have to go into the settings every time to reconnect Bluetooth. It's just a pain in the ass. There it is. That beep indicates that we are now connected. Let's load up some something suitable. Wanna kill myself? Alright! Wanna kill myself? Absolute silence. No whining, no buzzing. Chop jobbed. Hmm. How's about that then, pop pickers? It looks like my inline dongle has done the job. You know, I'll, uh, I'll hot snot that in there and bolt this thing back together and uh, we're back in business. And uh, assuming the business survives this COVID-19 lockdown bother that is. But uh, once again, my thanks to you clever commenters out there for improving my project. Stay safe, all of you, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>